and then I find a book and I'm like, I eat it up, I eat it up. I keep getting asked, Anna, when are you gonna make a booktube video again? Anna, what happened to the booktube? Um, I don't know what happened to the booktube, but here we are on the main channel with a book video, which I am so very excited for. I'm starting off the month with a book that came from the library, so beat and battered, but I hope that means that it is so well loved. I'm reading Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. What I learned is that Christina Lauren is a two person author duo. I guess one is Christina and one is Lauren is what I'm assuming. But I went into this book not knowing too much about it. It is a romance. I knew that about it. It is a romance, but I didn't really know the premise. And right now I am actually 116 pages in out of like 400 something. Something to note is that even though it's over 400 pages, the pages move fastly. Like you go through them. They don't have too many words on a page. Some of them are text messages. Some of them are emails. Some of them are skipping chapters and it has like a blank page. So you move fast through the book. Honestly, for being 116 pages in right now, I feel like I don't really understand. Like I understand what's going on, but I don't have too, too much context. But we're following our main character. Our main character is named Macy and we get alternating chapters between then and now. In the very first paragraph, Macy runs into Elliot at a coffee shop. And this is like such a big deal. Like Macy is making this be a huge deal. And we find out that's because she and Elliot haven't talked for 11 years since they were teenagers. And I don't know yet like what happened to where they stopped talking talking, they kind of keep alluding to it, but they were close beforehand. Whenever Macy was 13, she and her dad bought this like weekend home at like a lake, I believe, and Elliot lived next door. And so they became super close at a young age. They would read in Macy's closet together, her little library closet. So we're getting that perspective from the past. And then we're getting the current where they run into each other. Macy like literally physically runs away from Elliot when she sees him and he goes out into the street and chases her and is like, Macy, what the heck? <laughs> This isn't a spoiler because it's so fast into the book, but they end up meeting for breakfast because Elliot is very persistent that they like sit down and talk after not talking for 11 years. And we find out that just from running into Macy in the coffee shop, Elliot broke up with his girlfriend that same night. So like they have been connected. Like there is something going on between the two. Little hitch in the story that I kind of forgot because honestly it doesn't mention it all that much is that Macy is engaged. <laughs> to someone else, someone that is not Elliot. The Sean character, we haven't even really met him yet. But that's my update so far from being 116 pages in. I am excited to sit down and just keep reading it. It has been really good so far. In just kind of a light way and keeping me curious about like what their relationship was when they were teenagers, what happened to where they didn't talk for 11 years, like not even at all. I feel like 11 years is a long time to be purposefully not communicating whenever you were so close. So I'm very curious to see where it goes. I'm at page 321 and I'm absolutely loving this book. It is such an easy read, but in such a good way. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Whenever I was updating my Goodreads, like through the pages that I had read, I said, this book turns my brain off and that is not at all a bad thing. It's just like, you're so immersed, but it's not hard. You know what I mean? It obviously is a romance and I'm still loving that. It's still jumping between the chapters and I'm still loving that. Some romance is progressing, but we still haven't found out what caused them to not speak for 11 years which is obviously such a big thing and we're I have this much left and so I'm sure we're gonna figure it out and I don't know I'm so I feel like they both keep alluding to like how broken they were afterwards but in the back then chapters they're like talking to each other when they're young and in love about how like I just can't imagine doing life without you you know like all of that stuff and they didn't talk for 11 years and I'm so curious how it's gonna change my opinion of Macy or Elliot based on like what happened I don't know or which is gonna be something that's like no big deal it should not have you know like it's going to be an interesting author decision that i'm just ready to figure it out so let's see i'm on page 321 i don't know how many pages there are total i know it's over 400 let's see oh there's a little book club guide in the back i don't want to like accidentally spoil anything oh that's acknowledgements okay well acknowledgement starts on page 405 so i have about 80 pages left and my goal is to finish it today i have a youtube video that i want to edit but i want to finish this book before i do anything else <laughs> almost done and I am stressed and I'm so worried that it's gonna like drop this bomb on me and then finish. I didn't know that this book did this. I don't feel like I've heard about other people talking about this book doing this. I'm still not finished. 
Remember when I was like, this book is so easy. This book lets me turn my brain off. a short list of books that made me cry and that list just keeps getting longer and longer there's this little flaw in the book this little black ink splotch and I feel like it's very fitting I'm kind of mad because this was so cute and so fun and now I feel like I don't have a heart anymore. It just got like pulled out of me. I think I need to finish this without you, but I'll come back. I have 13 more pages if I can handle them. I just finished. I have not gotten time to process, but oh my goodness, I have to stop waiting so long to read books that everybody else gets obsessed with. I feel like Love in Other Words had such a phase and I just never picked it up and I should have because this is what y'all have been hiding from me. Like it might be a five star. I don't know. I need to reflect more before I actually make that call because that's a big call to make. Sometimes thinking about it, I'm like, why would I even like romance? Like just two people falling in love, lame. <laughs> and then I find a book and I'm like, I eat it up. I eat it up. I feel like this one was kind of fun to me too because it like includes the teenage love in there. And if you guys don't know, I had a little teenage love and I'm still with him. He's sitting in that room right over there. It's like, obviously not that it was at all the same, but it is just kind of, I feel like uniquely touching to me to read about two people who became best friends and a couple when they were a teenagers. And then like, I have my own, you know, and then became old. Yeah, so that was incredible. Um, I feel like I'm setting you up for disappointment for the rest of the video. Cause like, how do I, how do I beat that? I don't know. What book do I pick up next? That's actually, that's actually a very good question. See, I made myself like a rough TBR over on this little shelf, I'll show you. And I put it in the order that I thought I would wanna read things. But tell me how, <laughs> tell me how I'm supposed to go from Love and Other Words by Christina Warren <laughs> to my very first Stephen King book. <laughs> that's kind of whiplashy. And then the option that I have next for myself, if not the Stephen King, <laughs> was Dune. Both of which I am actually very excited to read. I feel like one I've never read a Stephen King book so I am I don't know, excited to see what all the hype is about you know Mr. Stephen King and then Dune I don't know why I'm interested in it I don't even know what it's about I feel like I need to watch like I just need to search and watch like every booktuber that I watch and see when they read Love and Other Words because they definitely have and just like watch their vlogs and watch their reading wrap-ups that include that that's what I need and then maybe afterwards I'll be ready for Stephen King this book is The Green Mile and it is I think it's gonna be really interesting, but I also feel like it's gonna wreck me in a different way. Basically, <laughs> let us sit back down. Basically, I feel like most of you know this about me, but I used to work in jail, so I have very complex feelings and emotions and memories tied up in there. And so any book that like includes jail, I'm very interested in, but it also has such a chance to absolutely obliterate me. <laughs> this one, I feel like I haven't heard much about. I haven't heard too much about too many Stephen King. Like the, the big ones, definitely. And I remember Haley Pham loves Billy Summers. But this one, welcome to Cold Mountain Penitentiary, home to the depression worn men of E Block. Convicted killers all, each awaits his turn to walk the Green Mile, the lime colored linoleum corridor leading to a final meeting with old Sparky, Cold Mountain's electric chair. Prison guard Paul Edgecombe has seen his share of oddities over the years working the mile, but he's never seen anything like John Coffey, a man with the body of a giant and the mind of a child. Actually, have I heard of this? What's that movie with Michael in it? Cause I seen that once when I was like 15. Is that the same thing? <laughs> a man with the body of a giant and the mind of a child condemned for a crime terrifying in its violence and shocking in its depravity. And in this place of ultimate retribution, Edgecombe is about to discover the terrible wonders truth about John Coffey, a truth that will challenge his most cherished beliefs. So it might, it honestly might be tomorrow before I'm ready to make this little whiplash jump into this thing and whatever it had waiting for me. This is like my perfect paperback though. It's small, it has kind of the, the sort of matte cover with the, the letters on it. Look at the pages. See the way it does that? <laughs> this, this is perfect. Hello on this stormy day. I feel like I need to come clean about something and that is the fact that earlier whenever I said that I think there might be a movie that was like this, whenever I was reading the synopsis and I was like, there's that movie with like Michael. 
I looked it up. There is a movie based off of this. It's called The Green Mile. And one of the main actors in it has the first name Michael. I forget what his last name is now. I feel like he's a pretty well-known actor. There's also Tom Hanks in it. That 100% is not what I was thinking whenever I made that claim. I was thinking of Michael Myers and Halloween. And I had to look it up to make that distinction in my head. I think it was something that was like, oh, big body with the mind of a child or something. It said that. <laughs> I 100% was thinking Michael Myers. I was not as smart as that could have seemed. But some things that I've learned about this book. I am maybe, I don't know, a sixth, a seventh, an eighth in. There are six little books that make up this book, which I was kind of confused by whenever I saw it on Goodreads. Cause I was like, this is what, a series? Like, what do you mean one through six? The Green Mile one through six. Apparently it was released back in, I think it was like 1996 is when it was first released. When it was released, it was released a sixth of the book at the time. So it was a series of releasing the same story kind of as if it were like TV episodes coming out. It was like episodes of the book. And so there's a little forward in the beginning from Mr. Stephen King himself talking about his decision to do that. And I, that's pretty cool, I think. I've made it through the first little tidbit, the first little story, the chunk that was released altogether. And I'm into the second one now. So uh, that helps that part make more sense to me. But where me and this book do not get along so far is the fact that anytime there's anything to do with jail, prison, there's a defendant there. In my head, I immediately jump to they're innocent and wrongly put on death row, or there are a lot of factors going on in their life at the same time. They don't deserve to die. And I stand by that um, anti-death penalty. And so I go into books assuming that they're gonna be the same, like assuming that every book that mentions prison is The Sun Does Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton. Like that's where my brain is at, and that's not where Mr. King's brain is at, I believe. It's like every story they're bringing up of like the criminal. See, look, I even did it there, the criminal. In my head, I'm like, but that can't be the full story. No, he didn't just murder two innocent people just for the fun of it. He did not do that. Whereas like, I think in the book, like, no, they are. They, they did just murder two innocent people just for the fun of it. So that's where I'm struggling so far. I don't know yet what the plot is, like what the conflict is gonna be. We haven't like moved anywhere in the story. It is very narrator heavy, but I think I like that. And I think that it's not a bold claim to say that Stephen King knows how to write. Like he's written what, 60 plus books in the past 40 plus years that so many of them have been like bestsellers and well-loved and the stories and everything. So it is not a bold claim to say that Stephen King knows how to write. But the fact that like, I've just been in a narrator's head for this chunk of the book and I'm not bored, I'm interested. Like the voice is so strong. So I'm really enjoying it so far, despite the little everyone is innocent and doesn't deserve to be on death row part. But with that, I don't have like a plot update or anything because like nothing's really happened at this point. I don't feel scared yet. I don't know if I'm gonna feel scared through this. I don't. I, I genuinely have no idea where this book is headed, but that's my update. Let's see, I can actually tell you which page I'm on. I'm on page 86 out of 500. You can do the math, I will not be. I'll be putting my noise canceling headphones back on and continuing with my stormy little day. I figured I should give an update now that I am 338 pages in and oh my goodness, kind of wrecking me so far. I do really enjoy Stephen King's like style of writing, like way of writing. It's very interesting to me. Something that I think gives good context that is not mentioned in the back of the book is that this book is written, like the narrator's point of view is written from like he is now in a retirement home and he's like writing the most like memorable year of his life basically. So sometimes we're jumping forward to Mr. Narrator's life whenever he is at Georgia Pines, this is Georgia, this retirement home that's 60 miles out of Atlanta. I feel like books follow me sometimes. What are we doing in Atlanta? Well, what are we doing outside of Atlanta? And he will give like kind of more reflection on his memories and stuff. And then we jump back into the story of in 1932 with John Coffey and being on e-block and the executions of which so far in the book there have been two execution scenes yesterday i was reading an awful awful one and i was reading like on the bus into work i was like how do i switch my mind from this into work and then i picked it up again at lunch even though i knew it was going to feel weird and i was just sitting there reading about an execution 
while I was eating my lunch in the little hospital cafeteria. So it's not an easy book. It definitely is not an easy book. I am worried about the ending and how I'm gonna handle it. But there definitely are aspects of this book that I was not expecting. It on Storygraph is classified as fantasy along with some other genres. And I was like, that seems like a weird genre, but it is a little, I wouldn't say fantasy. I would say like, it really is more magical realism type thing going on, but that's cool. So I don't know how long it'll take me to finish the last, it's like 150 pages that I have left. I'm really excited at myself for reading a long book like this. The next update will probably be when I finish it. I genuinely have no idea what to think about that book. It went places that I like never would have guessed. Like the plot, you just cannot guess from the back. So that's why I don't want to tell you too much because since the back summary is like so vague versus where the book ends up going, I don't want to like say too much. But I was shocked at where it went. I felt love at times. I felt disgust at times. I felt the evils of the world at times. There was a lot going on in there. It definitely got me more intrigued in other Stephen King books because I do think that the writing is something that just made it stand out. I will say though, there was times when I was kind of thinking like maybe this would be a five-ish star story. I'm not gonna give it five stars. One of those things being just like whenever there's horrific scenes, like I just I just don't, I can make my way through them, but it just like doesn't feel like a five star book whenever I'm having to like make my way through horrific scenes. And like, even if I get why they're there, it just personality wise, <laughs> I just can't. Also something to know, this book was written, I believe in the 1990s. So a while ago, but not like long, long ago. The main plot takes place in the 1930s and a lot of the language from the white characters is accurate to the time, which is just something to keep in mind as you go into the book, is that there's some nasty language in there. I have no idea what what to do with this. <laughs> I think I might give it like a four star, just like a straight four, because with how entranced I was, how hooked I was, how intrigued I was by the narration style and everything, those parts were all really good. And the story was so interesting. I don't know how to like, I don't know how to make a book follow this. I am glad I did not cry though. I almost did it a couple points, but I did not cry. So we did not have two crying books in a row. I forgot to grab the book I was gonna talk to you about. So I have two books to talk to you about. One of them is the book that I tried to read and could not. And then one of them is the book that I then started reading. So I made this whole clip picking out a book that I was gonna to go to next. And I ended up with this one because it is an ARC. It comes out in September, which just always makes me feel cool. And I'm also trying to read the ARCs that I win in Goodreads giveaways because I feel like in my head that makes them give them more often. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but I'm trying to keep my ratio up, you know? This one's called Move Like Water, My Story of the Sea. It's a memoir by Hannah Stowe, who I don't know who that is. And I feel like sometimes with memoirs, I'll be interested if it is something that interests me or if it's a person that interests and so i thought with this one i thought it would be kind of interesting because it was like about her story growing up by the water and like the sea and everything and i imagine that this would hit for some people i could not get into it i could not read that many pages of it mostly because it was maybe like eight pages in a row of just visual description like of a beach which you could take to be very beautiful but for me i just i couldn't transition from the great books that i've been reading to such a slow descriptive book that wasn't even getting into a story that I just wasn't sure that I was going to be intrigued by the story when I got into it. It's a beautiful cover and I feel so lucky to have gotten this book in a Goodreads giveaway. Howsoever, I DNF'd it very early in and I don't imagine that I'll pick it back up again. So that being said, I don't remember then how I chose to pick up this book. I guess I was maybe just like in the mood for Frederick Bachman. I don't know. Frederick Bachman is the same author that wrote A Man Called O and the Beartown trilogy of which I've read two so far. But this one is called My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. It's a kind of thick book. I think it's under 400 pages, but not by a whole lot. 
It's like 370. I have loved every single book of Frederick Bachman's that I have read. So my expectations are high with this one. I am just now 86 pages in, but I feel like I feel like the beginning was a little bit slow compared to some of his books, but I'm okay with that because I just imagine that it's going to get better and it has even already. But we are following Elsa, who is a seven-year-old, and she is a seven-year-old who doesn't really fit in with her peers, gets bullied at school. Obviously, we love her because we get to be in her head and get to know her, but like her friends bully her. She feels like an outcast. But the one person that she knows is always gonna be on her side is her grandma, her granny. And so we get a picture into like their relationship and how granny doesn't quite fit into like the societal box that the granny fits in. Usually she's loud, she's abrasive, but she is Elsa's biggest advocate. And very early in the book, we find out that Elsa is going to have to learn to live her life without granny. And Elsa's seven, so we're like partly processing information from like a seven year old's framework. But the interesting part is that there is a neighbor that is called the monster in this book. That's what Elsa thinks of him as. And I feel like it's giving kind of like Boo Radley of like, oh, the scary guy who doesn't come out of his apartment and like, I'm not gonna walk close to his apartment. But before Granny passes away, she gives Elsa a letter that she's supposed to deliver to the monster, Mr. Boo Radley character. So I don't think I've gotten to the full plot yet. Like I said, I'm 86 pages in, but I still very, very much feel like in the beginning of it, but we're kind of like Elsa coping with grief. We're seeing Elsa work up to giving this letter to this like scary neighbor. And then I have no idea where that's gonna go once we meet him and how that all is gonna work out. But I'm very intrigued. Frederick Bachman's books have just always been so good. And so I'm gonna continue reading it and we'll give you updates along the way. I'll probably vlog this too. So you have already, should have already seen this by the time this video goes up, cause this won't go up at the end of the month. But this little corner back there, that's all empty. Theoretically, if Facebook Marketplace does not let me down, I will have a reading chair in that corner. Tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. I am like so hesitant to say, because this is so sad for me, but I am not loving <laughs> this book all that much. I'm on page 206 now, so I've made it a bit further through, and it just is not feeling like other Frederick Bachman books have felt to me. I think the big thing that I'm kind of struggling with a little bit is that there's a lot of like, storytelling within the story. I think I already mentioned how we're following Elsa and she's seven years old and her grandma and all of that. But there was like this kind of fairy tale land that her grandma would tell her about. And it is such a big thread through the book where it's like Elsa is understanding things through that made up fairy tale land and also kind of like finding some truth in what her grandma would tell her. There were fairy tales or like meeting people type of deal. And I just, I feel kind of confused of like what's going on and what we're doing. Like I understand it to an extent, but I think I understand it to the extent that Elsa does at seven years old, which is impressive like to be able to do that with writing. But also I just wish that, I don't know, I just am not loving the way that it's told that way. Like it's cool that it's from Elsa's point of view, but I feel like I'm only understanding the story and like what's actually happening at that child's level and I wish I knew more. So I'm definitely gonna finish it. I think I'm gonna try to just like sit down and read quite a bit today to get through it, but it definitely is slow and I just am not loving it so far, which like I said, is sad for me because I've loved every single other Frederick Bachman book that I've like ever read. sweatshirt is all fun and games until this video is literally spanning a month of time and I'm gonna be wearing it the entire last like three quarters. <laughs> but I do still love the sweatshirt. <laughs> I finished Frederick Bachman. My grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry. I think my final rating is gonna be like a solid four. That's kind of my thought. Like this is a very good book, but it's not like, oh wow. Some things that I liked are that, especially towards the end, it really pulled on Frederick Bachman's whole thing about having people in the community come together and like people seeing each other in a deeper way than they usually have gotten used to. People supporting each other, but like not in a cheesy way, in like a deep humanity type way. I really love how his books hold on to that because I feel like 
pretty much everyone that I've read does. That being said, as we kind of discussed before, I got lost in the like storytelling of the story. There's a lot of fairy tale elements in here, not at all like outside of reality, but the seven year old goes back to this fairy tale land that her grandmother taught her about, told her about many, many times. And it's like, she makes sense of things through these fairy tales, which is cool. And I like the idea of it, but it was just after so many pages of it, I just, I got tired of it. I was talking to one of my friends because she really, really loved this book and Beartown didn't really hit as much for her. Whereas I really, really loved Beartown. And then obviously this one didn't hit as much for me. So I think it's just kind of, you know, some Frederick Bachman books are for some people, some are for other people. And like, it's not bad at all. And his writing is still good. I just, this one wasn't, wasn't exactly for me, but it's not bad. That being said, now we get to pick what book to read next. As of today, right now, it is August 23rd. So still got a little bit to go in the month. I've also been listening on audiobooks and books and reading some books um, via ebook, like on my computer, whenever I get the chance. And I'm not including those in these videos just because, I don't know, I just throw on audiobooks like randomly throughout the day. So it's kind of harder to be like, oh, okay, update. But I guess I'll just tell you at the end, like the audiobooks that I did listen to and the ebooks that I did finish. Assuming I finish, I moved through those really slow. As far as what we need to read next though, I have some books that I'm excited for, but I feel like it would take me too long to read right now to commit to. Like, I feel like I should read another book and then maybe one of these. But those options are A Court of Mist and Fury because I still have not read past the first book in Akatar and obviously people love Akatar. The first book was like fine. Like I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like great. But I think that that's a pretty common opinion in the series. So at some point I wanna read the second book. I just haven't gotten there yet. And it is a thick one, as you can tell. This is Dune, also a thick one, but also just like very highly regarded type of book. And then this is The Silent Wife by Karen Slaughter, a book that I actually bought probably like exactly a year ago without knowing that it was number nine in a series. And I don't think you would have to read the whole series before reading it because it's kind of like detective, crime, fiction. So you're just like following the same detectives and characters. So I don't think you have to read the ones leading up to it, but also I feel like my experience would be made better by reading the ones leading up to it. And I finally have, it just took me a year. <laughs> But they're set in Georgia, which is why they're pretty fun and interesting to me. But it's another thick one. So these are all books that I'm excited for, but I don't think they are next in line. I think they are like a little bit further than next in line. That being said, what could be next in line? We have some options. This book I put on hold at the library. I don't remember when and I don't remember why, but it came ready, Atalanta. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it's a Greek myth, but it's like a myth, the logical story. And I don't even think this is a retelling. I think this like is the myth. I feel like there was like an excerpt of Atalanta or like a short version of the story or something in one of the like cassettes that I used to listen to whenever I go to bed. So I'm guessing that's why I put this on hold is because like I knew the name, I knew part of the story and I just wanted to see like what the rest of the story is. So I do want to read it and like it's from the library so I have like a limited time to read it but I'm just not thrilled about it right now. It is less than 300 pages so theoretically it won't take me all that long once I get started on it. That's an option. It's just not like I'm not thrilled about it. This book is an arc that I received recently pulling the chariot of the sun. I received it recently but it was on sale August 1st so like it's already come out a memoir of a kidnapping it has the potential to be very good and very interesting recently though I have not been doing well with reading nonfiction physically just like attention span wise so I definitely could try this but it's another one I'm just like not super excited for it but I want to read the books that I receive as arcs so that I can keep receiving them. this is an arc that I got like two years ago it literally published September 28th 2021 so this book has been out now but I've always thought that it would be interesting to read and that'll kind of like expand my reading and so I wanted to read it I don't want to just like sit on my shelf forever which is how I made it into like this little category this little stack but it's like a western frontier 1830s this guy's a trapper a fur trapper a young fur trapper so I don't know if it's a western or if it's like the wrong time period to be categorized as a western that's kind of the vibes that I'm getting but it's not too long like it's yeah it's 268 pages I've had it sitting on my shelf for forever and so I kind of just want to read it to see is this worth keeping should I not keep this book because I don't like it. So again, I'm not like so excited and thrilled about it, but I want to read it. And then the last option to start with is another little short guy, but alone with you in the ether, ether. I see people say both. I'm pretty sure it's ether though by Olive e. Blake, which is a little like contemporary love story that I've heard is like very different than contemporary romances. I've also seen some people laugh at the writing in here, but I've also seen some people be like, oh, this is so good. This is so beautiful. So I'm very curious about it. And with that, I literally have no idea what book to choose. <laughs> start next. If this is the most stressful thing in my day though, like that's a good day. What if I, I don't know, it's so hard because I want to read these three, but I don't want to start a long book right now. What if I, should I just like a random number generator? Let me do that. Okay. 
we're gonna do one, two, three, four. He said I'm gonna minimum one, maximum four. It's one, so Atalanta it is. <laughs> I can't remember when I just pulled my hair. Atalanta it is. I think it'll be a pretty fast read. Hopefully it intrigues me too, but I will obviously keep you updated. Personally, I have been ready to film this clip for probably like 45 minutes now, but I waited because this little guy was in the dryer and I felt like, why would I wear? <laughs> I felt like, why would I wear any other shirt to talk in this specific video than my Halloween town one since it's been all I've been wearing anyways. I also say that to say this little mug warm, this little mug happy. But um, I am here to announce that I decided to DNF Atalanta after like 30 pages. I did not give it that much of a chance, but I just was not interested. I think I talked about this when I first was introducing it, but it's not like it's a retelling of the myth or anything. Like it really just is the myth. So I think I would have to be really interested to be in it. Like it seemed like it was good writing. It maybe was gonna get more interesting. I don't know. I maybe would be down to listen to it on audiobook later, but it's just not for now. <laughs> Speaking of audiobooks, I do want to tell you about about the audiobooks that I, I'm sorry, my doctor's office just texted me. That's why I got confused. They're having me confirm an appointment that is literally like 22 days away. But I did want to tell you about the audiobooks that I listened to this month since I didn't include them throughout the month. The first audiobook I listened to was The Radium Girls, The Dark Story of America's Shining Women by Kate Moore. Why I picked this book up is because I read and I own actually her other book, The Woman They Could Not Silence. Something that is so unique about Kate Moore's writing whenever she writes nonfiction like this is that it is nonfiction, but it's written in a way that feels like you're reading a story. What I will say is that I really like The Woman They Could Not Silence way more than I liked The Radium Girls, which The Radium Girls was her first one, so I guess maybe she just got better. It is super interesting to read about. It's about girls in 1917 who painted radium on watches to make them like light up before they knew radium was bad for you. They actually like advertised it as, as this healthy thing, like encouraged people to like drink radium mixed in water and they felt so special that like they had access to the radium and whenever they would be painting the watches with these like tiny little brushes they would like lip point them meaning to clean off the brush basically they would put it in their mouth and do the with the paintbrush you know so that it would be pointy up top and then keep painting and depending on how much you know about radium that's not good <laughs> that's not good and so a lot of the girls began getting sick super super sick in really awful ways and this kind of follows their battle of getting the big corporations and the big factories to admit that radium is bad for you and that it is their fault that these girls are dying in these horrible horrible ways so it is super interesting to learn about but it is very very long and it is very very information heavy so so you can take that for what you will of if you would be wanting to listen to it or to read it or not. I ended up giving it a 2.75 stars because I think it's like, it's an all right book. You know, like it's an all right book. <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> it's the same descriptor twice that I just said. It's not a bad book. It's interesting, but it was kind of hard to push through. I also listened to You Could Make This Place Beautiful by Maggie Smith, which is a memoir following a divorcee. <laughs> it's like a coming of age story, but for a woman who was previously married, has children, and now is divorced and some of it is told in poems some of it is told in just like tiny little lines as chapters and then some of it is stories that she remembers so it was very interesting i think that she yes she read the audiobook so that's kind of cool too i gave this a three star because again it was like it was a good book it wasn't like so super standout i do see where it could be very impactful to people who are experiencing that same thing or have experienced that same thing of kind of like refinding yourself after the loss of a relationship so again it was an all right book <laughs> i apologize if you can hear the rain it's really coming down out there next i listened to cinder by marissa meyer which is a ya dystopian kind of romance book it's a cinderella retelling but it's in like futuristic china and cinder our main character is a cyborg there's this big old plague that's happening and she like meets the prince and she's a mechanic and there's this evil queen from the moon like <laughs> There's so much that goes on in this book. And I'm so intrigued by them. And I remember I read this whenever, I was probably like a preteen or so, I read it. And that's why I wanted to listen to it again, was kind of just to remember it because the cover, which I would have put up on the screen by now, has just like stuck in my brain for so long. Like that cover, 
I know so well and for why I don't know what I've learned though there are four books in the series like the cinder series so I do plan on continuing listening at least the second one and then I'll you know reevaluate if I do the third and the fourth or not but there's also so many little novellas that the author has released in the same universe so that's kind of interesting I don't know where those are accessible or if I'll ever read those but it's kind of funny just seeing like how into this universe this author is I wonder, has she written other things? Yes, she has written some other young adult series as well. I gave this a 3.25. I guess it was like moving up 0.25 stars each time. It's not like it's this like wonderful standout book, but I was so interested in it. This isn't good, but I love it. I also listened to Mame by Jessica George. This is a contemporary literary fiction following Maddie, who is Ghanaian and living in London. And really it's just her juggling herself through life. Her dad has Parkinson's and she's the main caregiver for him. She's always been kind of a reserved, maybe not like goody two shoes, but like she doesn't like partake in many of the things in life. And we kind of follow her as she moves out of her parents' home, finds a new apartment, kind of starts dabbling and like dating and going out with friends for drinks and that kind of thing. But then also following her through tragedy and how she copes with grief and how her relationships both thrive and break through her grief. I understand why this book is popular. I feel like I've heard about it quite a lot. It is slower, it is reflective, it is sad, but I gave it a 3.5 stars. I do think there were times in it where I felt like I was like pushing to get through it, but it also felt touching and I really found myself caring for the main character, which I feel like is a testament to good writing. Lastly, I listened to Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutanto. This one I gave a 4.25 stars, which is very big as far as audiobooks go I feel like I usually don't get as into audiobooks as when I'm physically reading a book just because I don't always pay attention I think physically reading is just like how I focus more but this is a like cozy mystery featuring an elderly woman Vera Wong who is the owner of a tea shop and suddenly one day a man shows up deceased dead murdered in her tea shop and so she dives into the investigation because obviously the police can't do their job so she has to do it better than them and in that there's this little cast of characters that are Vera's suspects and she like brings them together and gets close to some of them and you start to follow their relationships with each other like they're not like creepy suspects they're all just like very real people and so it's cute in that way but also you're following the mystery the entire time of like who actually killed this man and why and who was this man and what was he up to and everything so you say interested because the mystery but you also like fall in love with the characters which was so cool all that being said i loved filming this video i have loved editing this video to the point that i have so far and i really hope to continue doing ones like this i don't know if it'll be the same format every time if you like it let me know and i can start just doing like kind of monthly reading vlogs but my hope and obviously i'm not committing to this because you saw how me committing to the book tube went my hope is to do maybe like one book video a month we'll see no promises could be two one month none the next month this is something that's so fun to me and i really enjoy doing it so i appreciate you taking the time to watch hope you enjoyed it too subscribe before you go and i'll see you next time